Hey, it's Phil here from Euroheat and today we're at a job where another contractor has left, the system didn't work um, and so we're here to uh, not repair but completely demolish, take out and then rebuild the geothermal system. And I wanted to tell you about one specific part. So this is an open loop system which means that there's um, we're quite lucky we're here here in Perth there's a lot of groundwater everywhere and um, so we can actually utilize this groundwater and either strip heat from it take heat from it when we need it or we can dump heat into it and so that means we bring the water up it goes through a heat exchanger um, which you can't actually see right now but it's over there in the back corner and uh, the groundwater goes through, our system water goes through, they exchange energy and uh, without mixing water and the groundwater goes back down. Now here the design intention originally by the original contractor was good. They put in two uh, ground bores and that means two pumps and two control systems. Now that's awesome because if one for whatever reason doesn't work, great you've got a backup. But there was a few problems with this. The first one is that when I first um, came to, the, to this house and had a look and was speaking to the owner, he was showing me that he has electrical monitoring everywhere so he can see you know, how much power is being used all around the house. And he had a, a circuit, a, a measuring circuit on the bores and a measuring circuit on the heat pump. And he was saying, how come the bores are consuming more energy than the heat, heat pump itself? So I said at the time, I don't actually know, we're gonna have to have a look. And we came and had a look and we found out that even though the design intent is great, both bores were just on 24-7. So they're just running 24-7. The bores are they're either, I can't remember off the top of my head, 1.1 or 1.5 kilowatts each. So let's say potentially up to three kilowatts an hour. So that might be um, 90 cents an hour is the cost to run this. And it's just running 24 hours a day. And so what that means is it was just absolutely chewing through the power. Even when the heat pump wasn't calling for heat, it was running. And so how could they have avoided this? So when you have two pumps, you need to install a duty and standby controller. And what that means is it alternates between the pumps. So it might work, one, one pump might run for 12 hours, and then after those 12 hours, the next pump kicks in. And if one pump develops a fault, the, next, the other pump automatically picks up and, and keeps going and puts out a fault signal so you know that there is a problem, but without um, stopping, the, stopping the system from working. So ideally, that's what happens. Um, here, I guess a really basic um, control issue that wasn't looked after was even just switching the bore pumps on or off. So even if they were switched on only when the heat pump needed them and then switched off when the heat pump stopped, the running cost would have been you know, far, far, far lower and there wouldn't have been that issue. Another issue at this particular um, project is that the groundwater quality is not really good. So there's iron oxide bacteria in the groundwater and so when it comes up and if it comes into contact with any air, uh, which unfortunately sometimes it does, it, it starts multiplying and it turns into this like ready brown sludge and it fills up the pipes and the heat exchanger and it's harder for the pumps to push the water through and it's just a complete mess. So it's really important to um, make sure you know what the groundwater quality is in your area if you're going to go open loop. And if it's not good, then definitely go um, closed loop so that there is no interaction with the groundwater, it's completely separate, or go for an air source system. So if you would like um, help with a geothermal system with avoiding these issues, please give us a call at Euroheat. We'd love to help you out.